G'day everyone and welcome back to our final cardboard CubeSat project. Today we are going to be looking far beyond the inside of our CubeSat, far beyond even the space outside our CubeSat. We are going to be looking for light that's going to let us examine the universe beyond. Everything from the planet down below us to the stars up above us. We can use our vantage point up above the Earth's atmosphere, not just to get a spectacular view of the universe, but also to get a spectacular view of the planet below us. And of course, if we're in orbit around another planet, like Mars, for example, we can get a spectacular view of that as well. And this isn't just about taking pretty pictures. In fact, the experiment we're going to be doing today doesn't really take a picture at all, but it does measure light. And even with just a couple of measurements of light, we can tell an awful lot about what's going on out there in our universe. So a really good thing to compare our experiment today to is actually the very first weather satellite called Vanguard 2. So that had two telescopes on it and at the end of each telescope was a light sensor. Not a camera, just a single pixel. Not so different to the sensor that we're going to be using today. And by pointing those telescopes down at the Earth, by looking for bright spots, they could tell where it was cloudy. By looking for dark spots, they could tell where the sky was clear. And that was enough to start making some predictions about the weather. But of course, once you can take one or two measurements of a light, you can take a whole bunch. And that's how we put together those spectacular pictures from satellites like the James Webb Space Telescope, satellites around other planets like the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, or satellites looking down at our own planet like Himawari 8 or Landsat. So we're going to start small today, a little bit closer to that very first weather satellite with a single sensor. So this is our light sensor for today. It's called a light dependent resistor. So the way this works is that it puts up a little bit of resistance, makes it a little bit harder for electricity to flow past it. But how hard it is depends on how much light is falling on the sensor. It's a little bit like a tap or a valve that gets turned up or down depending on how much light is going past it. To get our data back to us, we are once again going to be using LEDs. This time we're using a red one and a green one. And finally, to give our spacecraft a command, our button is returning as well. So let's start by connecting up our LEDs. Uh, and just like with our temperature sensor, we are going to stick both of these up through the antenna on our binner CubeSat. Hook those shorter legs up to our ground which you remember from our power supply video is this row here, but also this row here where our microcontroller is connected. They're all connected together. So we're gonna put our red LED onto pin zero once again, and we're gonna hook our green LED up to pin one. All right, so that's our transmitter assembled. All right, so now we're gonna hook up our Button. That's going to tell our spacecraft when to take a measurement. So once again, we're going to hook one leg of our button up to ground and the other up to one of our microcontroller pins. I'm going to stick it on this one here, which will be pin two in our code. All right, so far so good. We've actually done both of these setups in our previous project. So if you do need a little bit of a recap on how those go together, go and check out our temperature sensor video for how our LEDs go together and our sending a message video for how our button works. The bit that's new is of course our light sensor. Now this is a little bit simpler than the sensor that we used to detect temperature. All this does is increase or decrease its resistance. It doesn't do sort of any of its own thinking. So to make our light sensor work, we need to add one extra component to our board, which is this. This is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And we're gonna use it to uh, build a little section of our circuit called a voltage divider. So if you remember, we said our light dependent resist resistor, our photo resistor here is kind of like a valve that goes up or down depending on how much light is passing through it. It lets a different amount of electricity through. Uh, the way electricity works is that if there's only one path for it to take, well, we're kind of still gonna get the same amount of electricity through no matter how much resistance it faces it's all gonna force its way through eventually. So just hooking this up to our pin 
won't work. Instead, we have to almost create a little fork in the road. Give it one option with a fixed resistance and one option with a variable resistance. So as the path through our sensor gets easier or harder compared with our fixed resistor, we're gonna see more or less voltage coming into our pin. All right, so to hook up our photoresistor, here's what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna connect one end, doesn't matter which, doesn't care which way around it is, one end of our photoresistor to power. So if you remember, that's in this row here. We're gonna be sticking five volts straight in to our photoresistor. For the other pin, we're gonna connect it to one of the pins on our microcontroller that we know can do an analog read. So one of the same ones that we used for our temperature sensor, uh, and I'm gonna connect it to A3, which is this one here. All right, so, so far so good, but our electricity right now only has one path that it can follow. So turning the resistance up or down isn't gonna make much of a difference. So to change the amount that actually ends up landing on that last pin, we're gonna connect that row through our resistor, which we know has a fixed amount of resistance, in this case, 10 kilo ohms. We're gonna connect that row to our ground as well. So I picked the pin on this side for a reason. It's gonna make it a little bit easier to put one leg in with our photo resistor and the other into the row that we know is connected to ground. So our finished voltage divider, pretty simple looks like that connects those two rows together like so. All right, so with our hardware in place, as always, it's time to add some software. So I'm gonna grab a microcontroller out, drop it into our programmer, and jump, as always, into Arduino. All right, so we're gonna start with a new blank sketch set up for the at tiny 85. And we're gonna start at the top by chucking all of the pins that we've used into some variables. So our red pin is, so our red LED is on pin zero, our green LED is on pin one, our button is on pin two, and our sensor is on analog pin three over the other side of our board. The other thing we're gonna need is somewhere to store a couple of bits of data. So there's two other numbers that we need to keep track of and uh, pass between different parts of our program. So we're gonna set those up up the top here as global variables too. The first one is the current light level, so the most recent light level that we've registered. And the other one is the previous light level. So the last light level that we measured that we're gonna compare it to. And based on which one is bigger, we're going to turn one of our LEDs on and one of our LEDs off. That's gonna let us make comparisons about how bright the light coming into our LED is. And just like Vanguard 2, that very first weather satellite, if we've got two data points, we've got enough to start making some comparisons. We've got enough to start doing some science. So two data points is where we're gonna start. All right, so next we're gonna jump down into our setup code, which runs once when our microcontroller starts up. We're gonna set our red and green pins to be in output mode. We're going to set our sensor pin to input mode, and we're gonna put our button pin into input mode as well, but remind our microcontroller to use that built-in pull-up resistor. We're also gonna add a couple of little snippets of code to reach deep into the bowels of our microcontroller, flick some uh, virtual switches, and tell it that it needs to listen for interrupts on a particular pin. If you've forgotten how interrupts work, go back and look at our video about taking commands uh, because we go through it in detail there. For now, I'm just gonna chuck pretty much exactly the same code that we use there in, but just change the pin that it's listening to to pin two. So next, I'm gonna jump straight into telling it which code it should execute when we push the button. So first, we're gonna check that our button has been pressed and released, because we only wanna do this once, rather than every time the pin changes. Then we're gonna move whatever our current light level is into our previous light level variable, and then overwrite our current light level with our analog read from our sensor pin. So we're basically saving whatever we measured last time in a different variable, before we overwrite that variable with a new measurement so that we can compare one measurement to the other. 
Last but certainly not least, we are going to jump down into our loop. Now we could just put the stuff we're about to write into our interrupt uh, routine, but remember it's a good idea to keep those interrupt routines as simple as we can. So we're just going to do a couple of really simple comparisons here. So if our current light level is less than our previous light level, we're going to turn our red LED on and our green LED off. And if our current light level is greater than our previous light level, so if our light has gotten brighter, we're going to turn our red LED off and our green LED on. All right, and cheeky upload to our microcontroller there. And we're ready to grab our microcontroller out and drop it back into our circuit. Right, we're going to connect our battery up, pop our, just like last time, I'm going to, for a bit of fun, pop our sensor out uh, through the bottom of our CubeSat. So we're going to drop this one where our star tracking camera goes and connect it back up like that. And let's chuck our button down through our S-band antenna. You don't have to do this, I just think it's fun. And then we're going to see our cube set up, which, as always, is going to be the trickiest part. Although by this point, I'm actually getting pretty good at it. And we're ready to give our CubeSat a test with our sensor at the bottom here. So I'm going to start, uh, remember both of our variables are starting at zero. So no matter what we measure, we're going to start by lighting up green. Good start. Uh, so let's point it at something much brighter, like the light we've got up above us here. Still green, so we know that that's brighter than our previous reading. If I get closer again, still green. If I start to move it away, our light goes red. Further away, our light goes red. Push the button again, light goes red again. Closer, green again. Further, red again. If I cover it up, Definitely darker. Push it, stays red. Expose it to the light again. Push it again, it goes green. So it's actually really, really sensitive. I, if I move it just a few centimeters further away, or a few centimeters closer, it can detect the difference in that light level. And that shows just how powerful being able to measure light from our universe is. So we can figure out a whole bunch about our universe just by looking at how bright it is, but also what color it is. So the light sensor that we've sent you is sensitive to pretty much the entire light spectrum. And that means that if you were to put a filter on it, you could measure what things reflected or emitted in different wavelengths, in different parts of the light spectrum. And that can give us even more information about how hot or cold things are, what they're made of, uh, and even like what it's like down on the surface of a planet, whether it's cloudy or clear on Earth, or what the surface of Mars might look like up close. So if you happen to have a set of colored light filters, maybe a little bit of cellophane, something like that lying around, uh, that's a bit of a challenge for you. See if you can add some light filters to our little light measuring device here. See if you can measure how different things reflect or emit different wavelengths of light. Now, of course, being able to look at how bright things are does require you to be able to point at them as well. That's actually got a pretty cool connection to where we've stuck our light sensor through here. So this comes through our CubeSat in the same spot as our star tracking camera, which is part of our attitude determination and control system. That's basically how we keep the CubeSat pointing in the direction we want it. Now, our star tracking camera looks for particular patterns of stars, but there are other types of sensors called sun sensors or horizon sensors that aren't much more complicated than this. Just like we can uh, see it get brighter as we point towards our light and dimmer as we point away from it, we can use that to figure out where the sun is in the sky or where the Earth's horizon is in the sky because our uh, horizon is pretty bright from space. And that helps us figure out which way the bottom or nadir of our spacecraft is pointing. So as another challenge, see if you could figure out how you might turn this little sensor, this little setup into a sun sensor or a horizon sensor.
So the last challenge I'm gonna leave you with is to fully replicate that first weather satellite mission at Vanguard 2. Right now we're taking two readings that are at different times but we could also set up our mission to take readings from two different directions and compare those instead. So there should be just enough pins on your microcontroller to hook up one more light sensor. So see if you can figure out how you might compare the output of one light sensor with the output of another. So sensors like this are the basis of not just all of our space exploration, our understanding of the stars, not just all of our planetary science, our understanding of what it's like in the other worlds in our solar system, but also of all of our Earth observation as well. So much of the understanding that we have of our own planet comes from being able to point at different parts of it, see how bright they are, and see what wavelengths they're sending back. I cannot wait to see what you do with these ideas and what you choose to explore. I'll see you out there.